The Vanzellini Saki monkey had not been seen alive since 1936, when four of these elusive primates were collected by Ecuadorian naturalist Alfonso Olaya. These bizarre-looking monkeys have fluffy tails, floppy haircuts, and golden arms, and they dwell in the trees in the depths of the Amazon rainforest. They're particularly special because they're not a subspecies of any other primate, but rather a species of its own, called Pithecia vanzellinii. Scientists had only come across two deceased specimens through the years. Until this photo was taken, the species was thought to be extinct. The photo emerged in early 2017, after biologist and Saki expert Dr. Laura Marsh ran across the remains of a bald-faced Saki killed for bushmeat. Inspired by her finding, Marsh led the houseboat Amazon expedition. A team of primatologists, field guides, and a drone operator set out to find an alive monkey for the first time in 81 years. Four days into the expedition, a team member saw one of the monkeys flinging between branches. But that was just the first of many sightings. Houseboat Amazon documented an unexpectedly high number of Saki monkeys residing along the river. These pictures by Houseboat Amazon's photographer Christina Shelby portray the species, also known as flying monkeys. Researchers describe its movements as cat-like, walking along high tree branches on all fours. Sadly, the future of this unique monkey is still uncertain. According to Dr. Marsh, the monkeys face a growing threat of habitat loss due to deforestation as trees are harvested and forests are cleared for pasture. As this extraordinary species is still hunted, Marsh and her team are pleading with local authorities to protect it. Short-nosed sea snake the Apisaurus aprefrontalis, or the short-nosed sea snake, is a species endemic to the Ningalu Reef and the Ashmore and Cartier Islands in northern Australia. The snake was added in 2010 to the list of critically endangered species after they vanished from their natural habitats in 2002, prompting speculation that they were extinct. The venomous snakes feed mostly on eels, and although they live exclusively in water, they must come to the surface to breathe at least once every two hours. This slender snake can grow up to 24 inches, and its body is usually a purplish-brown shade. But 15 years after its presumed extinction, Australia Parks and Wildlife Officer Grant Griffin found the snake hiding in plain sight. He snapped this photo of a yellow pair he observed on the Ningalu Reef off the coast of Western Australia. Researchers at James Cook University later confirmed that they were the short-nosed sea snake. From the picture, it appeared the particular pair were courting, a behavior that indicates the presence of a healthy breeding population. Researchers were also pleasantly surprised to find a significant population of another rare sea snake nearby. They published their findings in Biological Conservation, where they raised challenges for the conservation of both endangered species. The article reports that these two species are vulnerable to fishing gear often used in commercial prawn fishing. Their numbers may also have been impacted by warm sea temperatures, oil spills, and other contaminations. All these factors are likely contributing to the decline of their ecosystem. Still, the real reason for their disappearance remains unknown. The Santa Marta Toro in 2011, amateur naturalists Lizzie Noble and Cyan McCone were in the El Dorado Nature Reserve at night in northern Colombia. Suddenly, a tiny red rodent showed up at the porch of the lodge they were staying in. It was the extremely elusive Santa Marta tree rat, a small mammal that hadn't been seen in 113 years. The animal sat in the porch's banister and posed for almost two hours, only to disappear again. Roughly the size of a guinea pig, the animal has a band of reddish fur around its neck and a black and white tail. The rodent lives in the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, the highest coastal mountain range in the world, which had allowed it to stay hidden for over a century. One specimen was collected in the late 1800s, but little else is known about one of the world's rarest species. Researchers had never seen the rodent in its natural habitat, and don't even know where the critters make their homes. The mammal is currently listed as critically endangered in the IUCN Red List. After the 2011 photo surfaced, conservationists were inspired. Texas A&M PhD student Nicolette Roach was one of the scientists who began a mission into the jungle to find the elusive Santa Maria Toro again. She and her team set up camera traps throughout the nature reserve, attempting to lure the rodents from the shadows with sweets like heart-shaped cherry lollipops. The scientists also conducted monotonous, multi-hour nightly surveys of patches of forest for four weeks. But since so little is known about the creature, researchers had a hard time recognizing the signs the Toro leaves behind. Some local coffee farmers have spotted the Santa Marta Toro through the years, but scientists haven't been as lucky. However, they don't lose hope. The rodent is seen as a symbol for conservation and inspiration for those who believe that even the smallest creatures in the world can be saved from profound changes in the ecosystem. As Roach said in an interview, quote, This is a species that may take some patience to find again. I mean, it went over a hundred years without being documented. The Neptune's Cup Sponge 
The Salona Patera, better known as the Neptune's Cup Sponge, is a type of demisponge that can grow to more than three feet tall and wide. It was first discovered in the coastal waters of Southeast Asia in 1822 and earned its nickname due to a shape that resembles a wine glass. This iconic sponge is so big that a child could fit inside it. Its unique shape and size made it very sought after during the 19th century, when it was still found in abundance in the sea. Museums and private collections all over the world wanted to get their hands on one of these sponges, and they became frequently used as fancy bathtubs for babies. But their overharvesting led to a steep decline in their population. The last two live specimens were captured in 1907 off the coast of Bantam in West Java, Indonesia. After that, biologists believed the species had gone extinct. A Neptune's cup wasn't seen again until 1990, when one specimen was dredged up in the Australian waters. Over the decades, several more dead Neptune cups have turned up on the shores of Australia and Thailand. But it wasn't until 2011 that this photograph was taken by sponge expert Lim Sui Cheng from Singapore's national parks near St. John's Island. The image documents the first live sponge in more than 100 years. This was a surprising finding, considering the entire southern coastline of Singapore had changed dramatically in the last 50 years. It went from being a quiet refuge to a busy port, which threatened the existence of all its fauna. However, another Neptune's cup was discovered only 160 feet away from the first. According to marine biologist Corinne Tun, it's promising and suggests the existence of adult populations present within Singapore's coastal waters. Both the sponges were still young and only 12 inches across. Tun documented several inches of growth between visits four months apart. The finding of both specimens allows biologists to study the Neptune's cup in its natural habitat. It also granted biologists a perfect opportunity to discover the threats to the environment of this unique sponge. The Notornis The Notornis, or the South Island Takahe, is a flightless herbivorous bird of New Zealand. It's considered the largest living bird from the rail family. This huge member of the Gallinule family is characterized by its purple-blue feathers, greenish back wings, bright red face, peak beak and legs, and a noisy, deep caw sound. Growing to around 20 inches tall and weighing up to 10 pounds, these sedentary birds mate for life. In 1847, Anatomist Richard Owen found some fossil bones of what he believed to be an extinct species. He named it Notornis mantelli, or southern bird. However, a couple of years later, a living Notornis was sighted for the first time by a group of seal hunters strolling in fjordland, southern New Zealand. The group captured the bird and ate it three days later, reporting that the specimen was, quote, declared to be delicious. After Owen secured the bird's skin from the sealers, he presented the new specimen to the Zoological Society of London. In 1851, the Maori captured a Notornis and sent it to paleontologist Gideon Mantell. For the Maori, the Takahe was a well-known bird that once made for plentiful and good eating, but that eventually required to travel long distances to hunt. However, only two more specimens were collected during the following years. In 1879, a rabbiter's dog caught one of the birds. Ten years later, another dog found a female specimen, and its owner sold it to the Otago Museum for $1,000. Since 1893, there have been several sightings of the bird, but none were authenticated. The extraordinary Gallinule was believed to be extinct. But in November 1948, unusual footprints of a bird were found near Lake Teanau. This led Dr. G.B. Orbell and his colleagues on an expedition to look for the unknown creature behind them. To their surprise, they came across two of the legendary Takahe. After slowly creeping up to them and trapping them with a net, the team snapped this photo on New Zealand's South Island. The footage shows the Takahe alive for the first time in more than 50 years. Dr. Orbell recalled the birds were making a gulping noise and were not scared of the nets he set out to temporarily capture and photograph them. A newspaper described the finding as a moment of, quote, ornithological ecstasy. After taking the pictures, Orbell let the birds free. Today, the New Zealand government runs a stoat trapping program meant to control one of the main predators of the Notornis. Fjordland has also tried out captive rearing wild egg programs, which required artificial incubation of the bird. The goal is to establish a self-sustaining population of at least 500 Takahe. As of 2016, only about 300 exist across five small New Zealand islands.